is really clear off the jump before I get into the topic of the video is that I am not yet ready to delve into this being completely a sports 100% channel. This is because as far as today's topic, the Eagles first round draft pick and the Eagles in general, I'm going to be super clear to everybody. I am a football casual. As far as the game of football is concerned, I really feel like I know the wide receiver position. I know the running backs. I know the defensive backs. And even then, I'm not going to say, like, I know route trees. I know concepts and stuff like that, you know. Gay City Sports, a.k.a. Steve Hyder, he does a tremendous job at that. Link to his channel will be in the description below. And then I saw a Thinking Football channel. There's actually a Thinking Football link in the description as well for those two channels. If you want far more in-depth football than I'm capable of providing at the moment. That being said, though... I think everyone is interested in even a casual take. And I think this casual take will be a little bit educated. So let's talk. The Eagles go up to number 10, trade with the Dallas Cowboys to get their man, Devontae Smith. First of all, what this move signals, and I feel like I'm going to steal, you know, some people's funders saying this, is that... It feels like the Eagles learned from what they did wrong last year's draft. Last year's draft, remember, they had the opportunity to trade up the CD Lamb and decide not to do that. They decided to go get Jalen Rager. And then with the second round pick, you all know what happened there with the quarterback controversy. And that was actually a big fear even with this 12 pick and then the number 10 pick, we were all like, God, no. If a quarterback had been picked, even someone with the caliber of talent of Justin Fields, if a quarterback had been picked, now, I am not, this is hyperbole. This is hyperbole. It's not serious. It is sports hyperbole when I say this. But if the city of Philadelphia had Hyperbole burned down. I would not have been surprised if we picked another quarterback. If we had picked another quarterback, we might not have lived to see the dawn of the next day. <laughs> no one wanted a part of it. No one wanted another quarterback controversy, quarterback competition. None of that. And that was the fear, especially with the way the draft board was going. And Justin Fields continued to fall and fall and fall. And I was like, God, no. Between him and Mac Jones, right? And so you did not trust this ownership. And you did not trust Harvey Roseman. Because they talk about, we want quarterbacks. We want quarterbacks. We want the greatest quarterback room ever. Forget about the football team. And that was my big criticism. I just wrote comments on the time. The reality is, you have a pretty big man roster. And a 46-man roster on game day. You need active game day players. Every day, every down, football players. Not players who hold a clipboard. No matter how good your quarterback room is. You want a decent backup quarterback? They can still address that. Use your third round pick. Use your fourth round pick. Use your fifth round pick. I don't care. But you can never use a top two pick, your first and second round pick, on somebody who holds a clipboard. That might be super casual take, but it's super obvious take. Whether you're rebuilding or you're contending, you should still get pieces and make your 53-man roster the best it could possibly be at any given year. That's how the draft should go. And obviously there were reports that came out that, you know, Howie Roseman wasn't really listening to his scouts. And you gotta think, where did these reports come from? I do have to think that it came from a little mini mouse in the scouting department. 
Because if that is even remotely half true, one of them probably raised their hands in a report and wanted to do this because they're like, hey, dude, we're part of this. And we told you where to go and you chose not to go there. So we're going to let this out in the public to kind of pressure you this time to take our homework a little bit more seriously. If we tell you that Devontae Smith is one of the most, and he is one of the most explosive receivers in the draft, you should probably go get that guy if he's available. Then go and do that. And it was kind of a little bit of political pressure by the scouting department to get Howie Roseman in the right track. And it worked. And I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful because let me mention something in the corporate world. A corporate worker, not what they are, they, they pay what? 75000 compared to Harry Roseman's millions, buddying with Jeffrey Lurie. What are the odds that he's, able, he's actually able to listen to those guys? You know? It's kind of the corporate world is how it works. You got the guy on the left tail, and then you got the guy on the CEO. He bumped in, you're like, mm, do I know you? <laughs> so. You had to raise a stink in order to get someone like Howie's attention. And so props to them for doing that. But also a little bit of props goes to Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie for listening. They're like, you know what? We did this wrong last year. We did this wrong. We did not make the moves to make the 53 man roster better. We made moves for whatever calculation quarterback competition, quarterback battery, et cetera. We made moves, not for the 53, but for what our ideal is. And that's not how it should work, especially in the NFL. In the NFL, where player roster, the NFL has the most violent turnover in, in roster construction. In the NBA, it's very rare for four or five players to leave. In the NFL, it's very commonplace for 12, 15, 18 players to be gone the following year. So in the NFL, turnover is a constant. Because of that, there's also the opportunity to improve your roster every year. And now obviously the big elephant in the room there is that clearly and obviously, the very fact that they're able to go get a wide receiver who is an elite talent who should be picked on his own merit, but there is definitely something to be said of picking a wide receiver who has connection to Jalen Hurts, who can be a part of this roster moving forward, and they're not doing necessarily the same thing for C.D. Lamb. Obviously, it gives more credence to the fact not to beat the horse, he's moved on, but you can tell that it was more than smokescreen, it was more than fire to this situation, that it was just not working out long term. And that the Eagles already had plans in their mind, quarterback controversy or not, to move beyond. My issue with that from a casual standpoint is, if that was the case, you know, why did you sign the contract extension forcing you to really be limited in terms of your roster building abilities and why did you not move on sooner? If you knew that there was this attitude dysfunction, if you knew that this quarterback was not really, you know, keen on learning and listening and rallying the guys, if you knew that he was this dysfunctional in the locker room, why did you not move on sooner instead of making it ten times difficult on yourself and on the franchise, is something that we'll never know. We will never know how the Eagles exactly got to that point. But it looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel where they are starting anew with a quarterback that they, let's say, tentatively believe in. And tentative is the right word because there's not enough games in it. But you wouldn't have invested a second round pick and you wouldn't have compared him to Russell Wilson if you did not think that he had above average NFL ability. So the Eagles tentatively believe in him and are now drafting a player who fits both ends of the spectrum. This guy is going to be a stud receiver for a long time, hopefully, and this guy could be a stud panning with Jalen Hurts. If Hurts works out, this is great. If not, we got our new quarterback 
whoever that may be, a number one target. So overall, this pick is great right now and great for the future. Now, about the player in particular, regardless of the Eagles situation, what excites me personally about Devontae is that he is truly, like Andy Riddell said, he is a free possession receiver. In the intermediate game, in the short game, and in the long game, this guy is dangerous. He's very physical with his hands, does a great job with his hands getting separation. Crips without runner, left to right, jab, step, stop and go, everything. It's, I don't want to say the word easy. I never want to say the word easy. But for me, in terms of what I look for in a receiver, I was on the draft chat last year, you know, with the aforementioned Mr. Hyder and with Billy Mike. And I was like, for me personally, route running is the most important skill in a wide receiver. You've got to run your route. I care more about that personally than anything else. Because, you know, they say that the windows are tighter in the NFL. And that's absolutely true. So how do you create even those tight windows? Being a damn good route runner. So if you were to draft a receiver and you're like, we want this receiver to be our number one receiver or even our number two receiver, go look at his feet. Go look at his feet. Go look at his footwork. Because if you think about the receiver position, it's not all that different, and I compare it a lot of times to the NBA's wings and guards. Where there, you're dribbling a ball and you're using your feet to cross over, get yourself in a position to score. Here in the NFL or in football, you don't have a ball to dribble, but you're still using your feet to tap dance, shoot, shake a defender. So it's the same position. So I kind of know what to look for because of a different sport. Use your feet. If you got great feet, at the very minimum, he's going to be a good NFL receiver. By very minimum, I mean he'll be able to catch balls, he'll be able to get down the field. I don't know what stats, but I do know that most receivers with good feet should be able to be a part of your football team. And then the other thing you look for is hands. Now, I know uh, the particulars of the measurements, 10 inches or whatever. Devon H is like 9 and 1 foot inch. Who cares necessarily? I mean, I shouldn't say who cares, but that I'm just not that great for the measurement part of it. But what I do know, looking at tape, and again, that's going to be down to the description. What I do know is that this guy catches footballs. There was a stat by PFF of over 175 catches. He only had three drops. Only three drops. So he has good hands. He could catch a football. Whether they're big hands or small hands, who cares? The point is, he catches it and he doesn't let go. That's the number one thing. He catches the football. He has great feet. And he has a great catch radius. He has a great leaping ability. And that's the other thing you will look for as well. If you're not super tall, if you're not some Calvin Johnson type, can you at least leap? So that way you can get the catches in the NFL. So he's a great leaper, he's great vertically, and he's great with his speed. It's kind of a different thing than a Jalen Rager. With Jalen Rager, it's more jet sweeps and misdirections. And I actually do believe that Nick Sirianni will use Jalen Rager a lot more creatively than Doug Peterson could ever use Jalen Rager. So I'm excited to see Rager in the Sirianni offense, and I'm definitely excited to see Devontae Smith in the Sirianni offense. And I am excited to see Jalen Hurts in this offense, you know, where you got Dallas Goddard at the tight end position. So you got plenty of weapons, Miles Sanders, this blew up the Eagles' offense. We kind of overrated at times because we just haven't gotten the point production, per se. This ain't no greatest show on turf kind of thing. But it's definitely an above-average Eagles offense, I think it's fair to say. Especially if you get a healthy offensive line, which we all know has not really been. So cross your fingers. Hopefully, maybe you get an offensive line in day two or day three. Who knows, maybe you get more depth there, but it's kind of been hard with injuries. Brandon Brooks, 
back-to-back -back major surgeries. Lane Johnson was out for a while, so you've been unlucky. So a little bit of luck turns around in a positive direction. Your offensive line is healthy, and, and it's stable and constant. You got your young receivers. No more Deshaun Jackson, love you, but, you know, I think you retired, right? So enough said. No more Alshon Jeffrey. Travis Fogel will definitely be in the mix in the rotation. So you got young receivers, a young quarterback. I would like to have a young offensive lineman or two in there for the future. But overall, this Eagles offense looks a lot healthier now with a tentatively stable situation at quarterback. It's going to be up to Jalen Hurts to turn that tentative into permanent. And if he turns it into permanent, that will be a great advantage for an Eagles team that will have as many as two, possibly three first round draft picks the next year. If Jalen Hurts turns that into a permanent position of help at the quarterback position, you are going to be good as goal to quickly accelerate this rebuild with three first round draft picks. That is a heavy advantage next year. And you've got to give a lot of credit to Harry Roseman to be able to basically only trade it down four slots, got Devon H. Smith, and a future first round draft pick. I think that is tremendous value. And we could jost on, you know, Howie for the last several drafts, especially last year's draft. Definitely deserves the ridicule for that. Definitely deserves the ridicule for the bad contracts he signed. But as we move forward in this rebuild, it looks like we are doing this rebuild in the right direction. And that's all an Eagle fan could hope for, is that we are going in the right direction moving forward. You know, we can't change the past, but we can pave ourselves a, a bright future. And we did that by avoiding quarterback competition and going in and getting Devontae Schmidt. So what's next? What's next is the second round. I think second round and third round in the same day. I'm not quite sure. Normally the draft is three days. So I think rounds four through seven is typically Sunday. And rounds two and third is Saturday. And then obviously the Sixers play today. So is it going to be a little bit back and forth? I'm going to be watching the NFL draft. And then I'll be watching the Sixers game. And because I did make this video, I will probably make another video on days two and three of the draft. Like I said, I don't have the depth of knowledge to really, truly, you know, be some super expert. So I'm not confident in this. But I'm confident enough in what I did see from Devontae Smith say. I think he's going to be a great fit in an Eagle uniform. I think he's going to be a tremendous wide receiver for the Buffy Eagles. And I think, I think this team is in a position to continue to rebuild in a great place. Also, any time you can screw the New York Giants, you do that. <laughs> the New York Giants obviously wanted a wide receiver. We knew that, that he would go off the board at 11. And so we had to swallow our pride and deal with the ever-hated Dallas Cowboys to go in and make a deal for both franchises if it's the equivalent of doing a deal with the devil. But both devils came out good. We wanted a number one receiver. You know, the Cowboys wanted a franchise linebacker, and then they get an additional third-round pick to go along with that franchise linebacker. So we danced with the devil, and both devils came out great. For both franchises, so good dealing. We won't do it often, I promise you. But ah, what a great night and what a great Saturday. Looking forward to two things. Looking forward to us killing day two just like we killed day one. And looking forward to winning another game against an Atlanta Hawk team that has no business competing with a six of Arsenal. Six of Universe, but today it's Philly Universe. Peace out.